Good afternoon. It's not good morning anymore. So uh, welcome to the uh, JJC trustee December meeting. And uh, Dr. Farmer, can you do the Pledge of Allegiance for us? Our pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, thank you. So, uh, Karen, can we call us to order? Uh, roll call, Trustee Broderick. Present. Trustee Bazinski. Here. Trustee Garcia Gillen. Gian. Present. Uh, Trustee Lee. Trustee Mahalik. Trustee Morales. Here. Trustee Tamborski. And Trustee O'Connell. Here. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Mahalik is coming. So, uh, uh, <laughs> call the order of the pledge. Public. Okay. Uh, thanks everybody for call, for for calling. Thanks everybody for coming. <laughs> we don't have to call yet, but uh, um, uh, one o four public comments, Karen. Um, there are none. Okay. If not, then one o one point o five. Communications. Uh, we do have communications. Um, yes. uh, we do have a communication from the Direct Thy Path Daycare. Um, Sandiford Thomas is the owner and the director of Direct Thy Path Daycare, was writing to let us know that he thought we had outstanding work that our, the team is doing with the cohort. He works directly with Rebecca Caldwell and Julie brand Cillian, and they are extremely supportive of my staff. They both go above and beyond to assist in anything me and my team needs. Um, his center is currently struggling with staffing issues due to the nationwide teacher shortage, but because of the support and the staff referral he's received during these challenging times, he has been able to reopen a classroom um, due to the, um, regardless of the short staffing shortages. Um, he said the pandemic has brought some challenges to early childhood education and the cohort has made it easier to deal with those challenges. This program is one of the reasons my center can remain remain can remain open in a community where I serve 95% of the children who receive state subsidy. And he just wants to say thank you for supporting his early childhood program. Well, thank you. That's it, That's it for communications. That's it. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, uh, moment of silence. Thanks, sir. Chairman O'Connell and trustees of the board and members of the JJC community with us today. Thanks for joining us. I'm asking the college community to join us in a moment of silence for the following two individuals. The first being Dale Lehman, Joliet Junior College retiree, a professor of human anatomy and physiology for 32 years. And next, Edward Jorgensen, Joliet Junior College retiree. Ed worked in special maintenance and facility services for 38 years. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. 1.2.1. One. Selected reports. Point two point one. So I see Jeff's name on the agenda. Uh, I think Jeff's pointing to Karen. <laughs> Jeff's pointing to Karen. So oh, okay. Whoever wants to give this a lead up. Okay. All right. I got you. I'd like to introduce Ray Krause. He's the partner at Sickage Audit Firm, who is going to present some high-level information about our audit report. Thank you. High level information. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. As mentioned, my name is Ray Krause. I'm a partner at Sickich. 
Uh, first of all, I want to thank the chair and the board of trustees for inviting us here today to do a brief presentation on the results of the uh, past audit for June 30th, 2022. As you know, this was our first year working with the college and we were very pleased with the amount of cooperation we received, the excellent staff, the team that we work with at the college. So I wanna make sure I emphasize that first. Um, as a re result of our audit, we have issued three reports. Uh, the first is the annual comprehensive financial report. The second would be the single audit report and the uniform guidance. And finally, the third would be the auditor's communication with those charged with governance. We have issued unmodified opinions on the annual comprehensive financial report and single audit report, and that's really the highest form of assurance we could give as your auditors. Uh, our testing uh, indicated that the college has a sound system of internal controls. Uh, we did not identify any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies in the control environment that we have to report either to the board or the federal government. Uh, we're also pleased to say we did not identify any journal entries uh, that during the course of our audit. So a really outstanding job by the finance department at the college. Um, as far as the uh, federal funding goes, uh, the college did expend uh, over $36 million of federal funds this past year, an increase of about 5.5 million from 2021, uh, mainly of course, due to the HERF grants that uh, were awarded to the college over the last year. As far as our compliance testing, we tested over 92% of your federal funds, including the, uh, the Workforce Investment Opportunity Act, uh, the financial, Student Financial Aid Cluster course, and then the Higher Education Emergency Relief Funds, or the HERF. Um, with all that testing we did, uh, we did not have any findings or any question costs relating to those audits. So very impressive job, once again, by the finance team and the actual the financial aid team as well. Uh, once again, we commend the college for um, voluntarily preparing the annual comprehensive financial report. Um, it's really an excellent document in the spirit of transparency and accountability and communicating the financial position of the college. Operationally, the college net position increased $12.9 million in FY22, indicating a really strong performance year. Uh, management's discussion analysis is really the best page, pages to look at uh, in the annual comprehensive financial report because it gives more detail outside of just the numbers on how well that the, uh, the college performed uh, this past year. In closing, I wanted to mention the financial statements really demonstrate the college is in very good financial condition, both on a long-term and short-term basis. And at this point, I wanted to thank once again, the college, uh, those in the finance department, the student financial aid department, everybody that really helped us through our audit. You know, the first year we're kind of learning about the school and obviously the school's learning, you know, our, our style may be a little you know, different than maybe in the past. We wanted to really thank the team. I thought the transition went very, very well this year. Uh, and I want to once again express my gratitude for all the excellent cooperation we received uh, from the school, the college at this time. So at this point, I'm happy to uh, answer or address any questions you may have on the documents that we discussed. Real quick. You mentioned we had an increase of 12.9 million, and can you repeat that was from what? Yeah, 12.9 million um, would be in the net position. So the net position of the institution okay. increased by 12.9 million. That was from fiscal year 22, right? Yeah, from 21 to 22, the increase was 12.9. Okay. And you're still confirming all that was you've seen was balanced and budgeted because we've had 50 years, over 50 years of being balanced. And and in in keeping in with our budget, so we are still in good shape. Yes, is what you're seeing in your in your sightings and your uh, compliance yes, report. Absolutely, your audit report is. I have no further questions. Neither do I. Sounds like a big yay for us. Huh? Yes, absolutely. Okay, good time to celebrate good. for the for the. But this show. was your first. This was your first year working with them, right? Yes. And you had no problems at all. Oh no, I, th I thought the, I, like I said, the transition went very smooth. You know, some of the indications I always say is how how well the financial department's performing is when we come in and if we would find audit adjustments, that typically means that throughout the year there's probably differences and you're making a lot of internal decisions based on those differences. But the fact that there were no audit adjustments at year end gives you a good indication that the information you're receiving throughout the year internally is also accurate and correct. That's a good that's a good ind indicator of uh, the performance of the financial uh, finance department. 
And as I mentioned in the single audit, there was $36 million of federal funds. Uh, technically, we're normally only required to test 20% of them. We tested 92% because financial aid and the uh, uh, HERF are considered more higher risk programs. So we did test more than we really have to, and there were no findings. And that's also very commendable because the Department of Education doesn't have materiality thresholds. If there's a, a $10 finding, we have to report it. Uh, the fact that there were none is very impressive once again by your, your team at the college. Do we need to, since we have a foundation and it's us, do we need to give any information to the foundation or the foundation report need to come back to us so that there's total understanding of what's going on with foundation and with the, the college? Yeah, the, the foundation's actually reported in the, um, the report. It's actually a component unit of the college, so it's already been addressed. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay. Double Thank you very much. Thank you. you. Thanks a lot. All right. 1.2.2. We go that far? Yeah. Okay. 1.2.2. Yep. Nancy DeRoss. Dr. Gray. Thank you. Uh, whereas Nancy DeRoss has been a loyal and dedicated employee of Joliet Junior College for 37 years, beginning as an adjunct and retiring as a professor in the Natural Sciences Department. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Illinois Community College District Number 525, Joliet Junior College, does hereby recognize and commend Nancy DeRoss for her distinguished service as well as for her diligence, perseverance, and loyalty in executing those duties as herein stated. Adopted this 14th day of December, 2022. Thank you. So, uh, um, moved. Second. Uh, okay, roll call. All in now. favor? You, uh, want all, you want a roll call? Yes. Okay. Um, Trustee Broadwick? Aye. Trustee Pazinski? Aye. Trustee Garcia Guillen? Yes. Trustee Lee? Trustee Mahalik? Aye. Trustee Morales? Yes. Uh. Trustee Stamborski? Trustee O'Connell? Yes. Thank you. 1.2.3. Dr. Gray? Thank you again. Whereas Susan Humenick Schmidt has been a loyal and dedicated employee of Joliet Junior College for 21 years, retiring as a professor in the nursing department. And whereas Susan Humenick Schmidt is retiring with the proud distinction of Professor Emerita. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Illinois Community College District number 525, Joliet Junior College, does hereby recognize and commend. Sue Humenick Schmidt for her distinguished service, as well as for her diligence, perseverance, and loyalty in executing those duties as herein stated, adopted this 14th day of December, 2022. Thank you. Karen? So moved. Second. Trustee Broderick? Aye. Trustee Bozinski? Aye. Trustee Garcia Guillen? Yes. Trustee Mahalik? Yes. Trustee Morales? Yes. Trustee O'Connell. Yes. Motion passes. 1.2.4. Again, Karen. <laughs> no, no, not you, Karen. <laughs> Again, Dr. Gray. Whereas Karen Sackowitz has been a loyal and dedicated employee of Joliet Junior College for 23 years, retiring as a secretary in the library. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Illinois Community College District number 525. Joliet Junior College does hereby recognize and commend Karen Sackowitz for her distinguished service, as well as her diligence, perseverance, and loyalty in executing those duties as herein stated, adopted this 14th day of December, 2022. So moved. Second. Second to that. Okay. Yeah, close enough. Okay, Trustee Broderick? Aye. Trustee Bozinski? Aye. Trustee Garcia Guillen? Yes. Trustee Mahalik? Yes. Trustee Morales? Yes. Trustee O'Connell? Yes. Motion passes. 
Dr. Gray. And thank you again. Whereas William Yarrow has been a loyal and dedicated employee of Joliet Junior College for 29 years, retiring as a professor in the English Philosophy and World Languages Department, and whereas William Yarrow is retiring with the proud distinction of Professor Emeritus. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Illinois Community College District number 525, Joliet Junior College, does hereby recognize and commend William Yarrow for his distinguished service, as well as his diligence, perseverance, and loyalty in executing those duties as herein stated, adopted this 14th day of December, 2022. I'll moved. Second. Okay. And he is here. Trustee Broderick. Aye. Trustee Bozinski. Aye. Trustee Garcia Gein. Yes. Trustee Mahalik? Yes. Trustee Morales? Yes. Trustee O'Connell? Yes. Motion carried. Congrats, Bill. Uh, thank you. <laughs> May I say a few words? Yes. Yes, absolutely. yes please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I, I want to thank the board for uh, its support uh, during my time at Joliet Junior College. Um, and specifically, I'd like to thank them for supporting my two sabbaticals uh, during my uh, tenure. Um, I also appreciate your support of the Joliet Junior College uh, college ball team, the academic ball team, which uh, while I was coach, uh, we won five state championships. Um, and I'd also like to thank the board for supporting my development, uh, my professional development activities uh, over the uh, over the years. I've enjoyed teaching at Joliet Junior College very much, and uh, I have many fond memories of students, colleagues, administrators, and trustees, uh, and I will uh, take those into my retirement. Um, I wish the college uh, continued prosperity under its new leadership, and um, I just want to give a heartfelt thank you for uh, for everything that uh, that you've done uh, for uh, for me personally. Uh, thank you. More than welcome. Thank you. One point two point six for recognition of Pam Campbell for Karen Kissel. Whereas Pam Campbell has been a loyal and dedicated employee of Joliet Junior College for 25 years, retiring as a specialist in mail operations. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Illinois Community College District 525, Joliet Junior College, does hereby recognize and commend Pam Campbell for her distinguished service, as well as her diligence, perseverance, and loyalty in executing those duties as herein stated adopted this 14th day of December, 2022. So moved. Second. Trustee Broderick. Aye. Trustee Bozinski. Aye. Trustee Garcia Guillen. Yes. Trustee Mahalik. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee O'Connell. Yes. Motion's carried. Okay. All right. 1.2.7. And we do have a faculty union report. Even though Bob Marsink isn't here, we do have one. <laughs> um, hello, I'm, I'm Bill Hogan. I'm longtime treasurer of the union. Um, Bob's in a final exam and decided to do his job instead of talking <laughs> to you lovely people. Um, the uh, first, I want to um, talk just quickly about the retirees. Um, I know I knew them all, right, at least in passing. And I got to know Karen Sackowitz because she was a one time treasurer of the um, back when we had a clerical union before Tossie. Um, but the uh, faculty, Bill Yarrow, who's no longer with us, I just want to say he was a um, if you those of you who don't know him, he was a very intelligent, thoughtful man um, and incredibly kind. I was here once with my daughter, who was like a 16 year old at the time we're running errands and you come to get something from your office, we bumped into him. And my daughter still remembers that conversation about like where she was headed and he gave some advice. So um, very kind, um, he'll be missed. Um, Nancy DeRoss was in my department and you know she worked as a, uh, an adjunct and full time. 
and she developed curriculum, right? The fact we offer so much more than fitness center, but she, um, I'm happy that while she was still employed, her dream of the fitness center being opened, all students came true, right? I think that's uh, wonderful that that happened while she was still um, employed by JJC. Um, and Sue Smith um, served on the union executive board for eight years and did the, what, 2007 and 2011 contracts. Um, and she was, uh, she was a uh, hardworking, dedicated to what was best for JJC. Um, well, she still is, but she was doing it in a particular role, right? I assume she's still with us. <laughs> she was with us this morning. All right. The um, last, um, I also want to say um, everyone um, enjoyed the holiday party. It was nice to see it back to being a big full person event, in person event. Um, you know, it seemed like it was back to the old, old cafeteria days in terms of, well, we used to have these very big events, right? And then we had small events because of the pandemic. And I think everyone enjoyed it being back to being a big event. Um, Bob's kind of bitter he didn't win a basket, but <laughs> he blames the fact you allow people to win more than one. I know this because Annie Morrison, who won two for the third year in a row, um, heard from Bob Marsink about his... I don't know, vindictiveness. And, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, and it was nice to have in person. Um, it's weird having a holiday party then, right? Because as faculty, we have these stacks of lab. You know, the holidays start when you turn in grades. And that won't happen for, it'll happen. It will happen. <laughs> I'm assuring Dr. Gray. <laughs> um, and, um, but it has been nice to be back in, um, back in the classroom full, fully in a way that, with full classes, which is the first semester we're really doing this. And um, this, just this morning, I had a final 7.45 to 9.45. I had a kid who was, he was leaving. Sometimes they do this. They come up, they shake your hand. He goes, I didn't know this was just what I needed. I'd been trying to avoid coming back. And he's like meeting the other students, having people I could connect with. And he, um, he said that his family has commented on how he's like back to being himself. And there's a, you know, there's a place for all this, but some of these students, I think really getting them back in the classroom was good for them. Um, the other thing um, I want to mention about, um, I think I just want to reiterate the point of that audit, right, that the college is in great financial shape as we enter a negotiation semester. Ah. <laughs> I don't, someone might've missed that point. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks for pinch hitting for, uh, <laughs> for Bob Marsing. <laughs> the 128 is uh, adjunct faculty. We have the adjunct faculty here? No. Not this month, Chairman. Okay, all right. 1.3, the minutes, approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion? Anybody have anything bad to say about the minutes? All right, that's good. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes. Second. I would like to say that I'm hoping that we're adding the green sheeted ones with the additions of the ICCTA report. And I also think in remembering the agenda, I don't, I think we moved the ACCT conference 6.8 into the 6.3. So I don't think we need that one put in there that was stated in 6.3 separately so that that one needs to be removed and the numbers corrected okay. approved as amended then the motion as amended yeah. yes accept the motion <clears throat> as amended yeah. okay. second trustee bradrick aye Trustee Bozanski? Aye. Trustee garcia Guillen? Yes. Trustee Mahalik? Yes. Trustee Morales? Yes. Trustee O'Connell? Yes. Motion carried. 1.3.2, review the board retreat minutes from November 17th. I moved. So, second. Aye. Trustee Roderick? Aye. Trustee Bozinski? Aye. Trustee Garcia again? Yes. Trustee Mahalik? Yes. Trustee Morales? Yes. And Trustee O'Connell? 
Yes. Motion carries. 1.3.3 approval of. Wait a minute. Approval to find that the need for confidentiality a confidentiality exists for all closed sessions, minutes and. And the approval. So move. Second. Second. I have a question. What are we approving? This is part of our biannual review of our closed session minutes. We don't have any minutes eligible for review and approval, so we still have to make a finding that the need for confidentiality exists for all not approved closed session minutes. So that's part of our statutory obligation. So should we not have dates in here? From There's no minutes being approved. No, I know, but from a period of to a period of? No, because they can go back based on litigation or something. It can go back years and years and years. So unless you approve them, you don't put the dates in there that you approve because you're required to specifically identify the ones you approve. Everything else stays confidential. Okay, so then my question and concern comes into, I know we were supposed to be doing this June and December, correct? Correct. Semi-annual. Then monthly, we should be approving executive minutes so that we know what's been occurred in the executive minutes so that we don't have any memory loss when it comes to December or January or December or June to look at those minutes. So when are we going to be approving the executive minutes for each month that we do have an executive session? Under the statute, you require to do it twice a year, so we follow the statute. And then the statute sets out the guidelines for the approval of the minutes relative to the verbatim recordings. So we follow the statute exactly. So we don't do it on a monthly basis. But that's a statute for approving them, whether they are open or still closed. Correct. The one that I'm questioning is each month when we have an executive session, we need to see those minutes to make sure they're accurate and correct. So they are still maintained as closed until you come to December and to June. Otherwise, I'm not going to rely on my memory or any of their memories to know because we, that's a policy decision that the board can discuss at some point. That's not what we've done in the time that I've been here. So that's never been the practice of the board. So if that's a change that the board wants to make, it would be contrary to what's required by the statute. But if the board wants to go in that direction, we can have a discussion about that. But, but that is not what's required. But I think you're addressing the statute of review of opening or keeping them closed. I'm addressing approval of the minutes on a monthly basis of executive just like we do it's the same thing it, you either approve them or you don't approve them and you either destroy the verbatim record or you don't there's a requirement for that under the statute so we've been following that since i started here uh, well then why did joan always give us the minutes for executive sessions so that we could see them and approve them but keep them closed until the june or december review? they would never they would never have been approved she may have sent you a draft for you to review <clears throat> i don't know that joan did that but if she did that and i accept that she did she may have sent you that to review, but those minutes would not have been approved at a subsequent meeting. Well, I think we need to look at uh, moving that into a monthly position of approving the executive minutes because I don't rely on my memory being good for six months or a year to say what was said in those executive minutes or not. They're recorded. Yeah, they're recorded, but still some of the stuff that's kept in the minutes, you want to make sure either it's in or it's out based on what you recall of that minute of those minutes because it's not all verbatim in executive, whereas here it's verbatim. When you go in executive, it's roundabout. It's certain things, certain things put into it. This is probably a policy discussion that the board should have at its future retreat. Well, I'm bringing it to the attention that I think we do need to do that because I don't think any of us can rely on a six month or 12 month memory of what happened in, I, our, in our meetings. If I can um, chime in. So I understand where Trustee Broderick, where you're coming in, and I know for myself in the past when I've needed, when I wasn't sure or unclear, I've made an appointment, I come in and I sit and review and they play the tapes back. And I'm, you know, the information is given. Um, and maybe that's like uh, Attorney Buck says, we can go ahead and just put that on the next retreat and, and consider and have a, a discussion among ourselves. Yeah, but I think we should consider it. That's what we'll do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We need a vote on that motion second. So moved. Second. There already was. Yeah, there was one already. There already was. There was one. We just need one. Aye. <clears throat> Trustee Pazinski? Aye. Trustee Garcia again? Yes. Trustee Mahalik? Yes. Trustee O'Connell? 
Yes. Motion carries. 1.4 is approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Trustee Broderick? Aye. Trustee Bozinski? Aye. Trustee Garcia Guillen? Yes. Trustee Mahalik? Yes. Trustee Morales? Yes. Trustee O'Connell? Yes. Motion carried. 1.5, approval of the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. I'd like to have two things, 3.2.1 and 4.2.2 removed from the consent approval. And to, and to have discussion. 3.2.1, 3. 3. and then 4.2.2, right? Correct. Okay. 4.2. Oh, okay. 4.2.2. And I know there were a lot of questions, and I know you guys have the. Well, I think we have to approve the rest of the consent agenda. Right? Yeah. I'm doing discussion. Okay. I'm a title to discussion, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. I thought you were discussing one of the two that you pulled. No, not at all. I'm going into why I'm asking for discussion. Go, please. Thank you. Um, I went through a lot of the bills and I had gone through when Dr. Namuo talks to us on Friday and I asked if we could have more of a description under the bill area. If it's for a travel purpose, I mean, when I was looking at travel to a state fair, it would be nice to know the department so that we have more of a familiar, familiarity of knowing what and when there's airfare, who it's for versus just a trip to Greece, because I don't know who's taking the trip to Greece or who's going to the state fair in Tulsa. I think it would just be a little bit more detailed in that. And I don't know, is workforce or work day? What is it that's workday? Work work day. Yeah. Sorry, work day. If we can add that to it, that would be great. And hold on. And as you're looking through that, Trustee Broderick, I think that's something we can accomplish. Uh, you know, additional detail provided to the board in regards to expenses. So absolutely, thank you. Yeah, because I think that was my main focus. I mean, I know that Dr. Namu is new. I know you're new too. And I think just going through, I normally don't go through the bill sides like that, but when things like that stick out, and I also identified too the concerns for the um, Facebook and the um, yeah, yeah, those all of the social media things. And I think that that's going to be present then, Kelly, in January from your area. OK, because I think that's something we need to look at because there's a lot of bills. And I do know that in the bill section, too, um, we had the trick or treat, trunk or treat, whatever. I think that it was provided with a grant, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So that did subsidize just little notes to help us understand would be great because I did some research to ask about it and it was told that there was a grants to provide because there was a lot of money that did go out, which I think is a great idea. But if we know where the money's coming from, it helps us with the approvals. Thank you. Anything else? Mm -hmm. I'm good. And we can approve the. Okay. Trustee Broderick? Aye. Trustee Bozinski? Aye. Trustee Garcia Guillen? Yes. Trustee Mahalik? Yes. Trustee Morales? Yes. Trustee O'Connell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. We're all right down the president's report. 3.2.1. 3.2.1. I think uh, Karen might have some information before we. 3.2.1. Okay. In regards to the, the timing? Oh, regard, in regards to the timing. Um, we're just referencing the policy of 01.45.00, which is meetings of the board. Um, on any agenda item, whether a board action is required, debate shall be limited to five minutes for the trustee for discussion on each proposition or agenda item. Each trustee will be given the option to discuss for up to three minutes and allowed two minutes of rebuttal after each trustee has been given time to speak um, after it's recognized by the chair. All debate comments will be limited to the merits of the agenda item, pro proposition, or issues being debated. So we have this handy dandy little timer here that I can set for three minutes. You'll see a countdown. Um, it will beep. Um, and then I'm resetting it. So the first person that speaks, the first time you speak, it's three minutes. Then um, 
everybody gets to speak. And then if you have a rebuttal, you can speak for two more minutes. So that's your total of five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So that's why it's here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Is it on? Two point one. Oh. It's one, not two, on, but you'll know when it's on and you'll know when it's off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we do three three point two point one. Uh, we need a motion on that. Is there a motion to approve three point two point one? So moved. Second. Discussion. 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 Okay. Um, I want to thank uh, Karen for bringing uh, the gathering of. Mr. Van Dyne and Mike, I can't think of Mike's last name, sorry to say that, uh, together to, to show me the biddings and the bid issues and the concerns that I had. I still, as I shared with both of you, still do have some concerns, um, but I wanted to say thank you that I appreciate you both giving me full details on that to this afternoon. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Trustee Broderick? Yes, with reservation. I'm sorry, you know what? I should have started with Trustee Morales. Yes. Uh, Trustee O'Connell? Yes. Trustee Broderick? Yes, with reservation. Trustee Bozinski? Yes. Trustee Garcia Guillen? Yes. And Trustee Mahalik? Yes. Okay, motion passed. Mm -hmm. Now we're at 4.2.2. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see if there's any reservations here. Uh, motion. So moved. Second. My concern, and I'm I'm gonna throw this back out still as the positions we need to add, and I'm gonna say this very carefully because both Alicia and I were at the um, leadership uh, conference this past week and we had a lot that they shared with the vice chair, the chair, the presidents in the meetings that we were at and it identified cohesion and I don't see cohesion in any of this passage that identifies that basically a vice chair is supposed to be cohesive with your chair and work with your president and your EVP is what came out of the meeting that we had. I'd like to see verbiage added that shows cohesion um, so that there is, so that the, the, the vice chair just isn't sitting there with title only. And that's what I'm looking at when I look at these policies that are out here. So I think we need to look at adding cohesion so that there is true cohesion with the board and with the president and his cabinet. Um, being that I'm a member of the policy committee, I know this has been reviewed um, in the policy committee and um, I agree that there does need to be perhaps maybe a little bit more cohesion in the relationships of the board and I think we are working through that. Um, but after going over this um, policy with our attorney, uh, Carl, um, we are staying in, in uh, we are staying consistent with Robert's rules of order Correct, um, Carl? Yes. So as it's written, is that it's it's in compliance? Oh, correct? definitely. We've been over this policy. I think uh, this might have been the second or third time that it's been up for approval. So we've gone over it, and I know the policy committee has gone over it quite a bit. Does anybody else have any other comments, questions? Maureen? No, I just think that after going to the, the governance meeting, you two saw that the executive why do we have an executive committee, which is the chair, the vice and the secretary, if the vice and the secretary aren't inclusive? It doesn't show cohesion. And that's where I'm asking for cohesion to be brought into it because it's the only way. And after listening to all the schools that were there at this at this convention, they all showed that they are there is cohesion with your vice and you're with your secretary. And I think Alicia can speak for that too, because she heard that in what they were saying and stating. What what well, what's the benefit of having it in there the way Maureen wants, and what's the what's the what's the 
downfall downfall and what's what's the benefit of not having it in there like well, i think the two things that we're talking about i think they're different things this mm -hmm. is a board policy that outlines what the duties are mm -hmm. i think what maureen is specifically addressing is the relationship between the chair the vice chair and the secretary mm -hmm. and that's a completely different circumstance than the purpose of this policy this purpose of the policy is to identify the duties and those are the duties that are required by the chair the vice chair and the secretary for the executive board of the college if the board wants to uh, craft or discuss some type of policy that is going to uh, address the relationship between the board members on the policy, whether on the board, whether it's the executive board or the other members of the board, that would probably be something different. But what we're trying to do is not create a situation, and this is what the policy committee, you know, went back and forth on, and and what we went through Robert's Rules of Order on, and why Robert's Rules is structured the way it is, is not to create a policy that makes it ineffective for the president to be able to communicate with the chairperson because the chair, the president is supposed to communicate with the chairperson. The chairperson is supposed to communicate with his executive board. And then those individuals are supposed to communicate with the board of trustees. And so the more onerous you make that relationship between the executive board and the president, the more difficult that relationship becomes. And so the policy committee was balancing those two goals and was consistent with Robert's rules that it's the president's job to communicate with the chair and vice versa. And then the executive board has the obligation to communicate amongst itself, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the information that the chair gets from the president. So that was the purpose of why the policy was structured the way it was and why the policy committee, I don't wanna say rejected that concept, but felt more comfortable with keeping it a more streamlined process between the president and the chair, and then putting the duty on the chair to communicate with the executive board that be the vice chair and the secretary and the whole board as, uh, in totality. I support the streamlining. I think that is important. But at the same time, um, Dan, if you can just maybe commit to maybe just being a little bit more communicative with the rest of the board on just different issues. I mean, I know you're really busy. We all are. And especially with the vice chair. Um, because I know a lot, Maureen works really hard on this board and I do see her, you know, really uh, being a, an effective board member, uh, but maybe having the communication come from you first. Um, I'd like to, you know, hear directly from you more often. So that's all I can ask. And I know that, you know, we all try to put in um, our time because we are volunteers on this board. Um, and I think we all are doing what we can. Um, but as the chairman, maybe just, you know, kick it up a notch or two. That's all. Okay. Thank you. We'll tick that notch. <laughs> Thank you. Other than that, we'll uh, go forward as uh, go forward as the uh, as our attorney has 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 presented us. Uh, uh, Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Bradrick. No. Trustee Pazinski. Yes. Trustee Garcia Guillen. Yes. Trustee Mahalik. Yes. Trustee O'Connell. Yes. Motion carries. Four point three. Approval to rename and distinguish alumni award. Judy Mitchell. I'll make that motion with the fact that adding uh, Dr. Making it an alumni award to Dr. Judy Mitchell, President Emerita, distinguished alumni award. I second that with the amendment. Hi. Um. So, uh, do we want uh, do we want uh, the extra verbiage in there with Judy Mitchell, Doctor Judy Mitchell? What is the J.D. Ross official title? Yeah. It does not include uh, the president emeritus, Mr. Pazinski. So it would be a little different. Yeah. Oh, so he he different. doesn't have that? No. No. Okay. So can we make that addition to him? Would the foundation allow it? That changes the we, history of everyone. We just have to. There'd be a separate action item in January for us. I agree with Jim. It, it does change the, the history of everyone that's ever won it, right? So, right. Yeah. So, consistency may be the best to keep mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. the, way it, the way it is. So. Right. Right. 
Right. So if you want to change it later, we can re re uh, re uh, we can talk about that later. But uh, but I'd like to see it change. I'd like to see it the same as as JD Ross's award, Dr. Ross. Dr. Mitchell. And procedurally, the motion was made and seconded based on the change in the name. So we need to. We have to address that procedurally. And then I'd like to withdraw my second. Um, I wasn't aware that uh, JD Ross did not include that, but for consistency's sake, then yeah, I think we should stay consistent. We want to amend that. Or not. I think we're good. There was no second. Yeah, yeah there's no second. So, okay. it, it, Trustee Broderick, if you want to amend your motion just to approve it as is, if you don't, then it'll, if there's no second, then it'll fail for a well, second. I, then we I guess I'm confused at where Jake's coming in that it would change things. What would it change? I'm trying to understand what your your methodology and saying that it would change. The board has been the same title that ever since it's in session, so I, I don't think it would change. The previous winners would not have the same title on their award. It would be a different award title now. Well, the award just from watching the various awards that have been presented, I think that it's certainly uh, excellent that we have two now uh, president to merit, right? That's wonderful. But I think the awards in terms of their concept and, and how they're awarded also recognize that, like, for instance, J.D. Ross was a former employee here and he was a large figure in the community. It encompasses more than just their service as president. And of course, Judy Mitchell was an alumni and she kind of rose up through the ranks and it encompasses more than that. So I appreciate the, that. But I think with regard to the J.D. Ross Award, when I've heard it described and I've heard those awards, it encompasses more than just their service as president. It was their contribution to the college community at large. And maybe that's the distinction. And I'm still confused as to where it would change by just putting the name to it, it's still got the same factions of what it is because it's always been the same same requirements for that award. It's just a name title. So I guess- What, what, what does the title say on each of the awards that the, the previous winners won? They just, does it do the president emeritus or, or? Well, Dr. Mitchell won the last one. No, what did, what did okay, it- Okay, so- What did it say on like- It award? said the Distinguished Alumni Award, if I'm not mistaken, correct, Christy? So, whenever you make a change, change is always good. Change you have to sometimes deal with. Changes. So she got an award that says the Distinguished Alumni Award. Change is not the, always good, but change is good. Change, change is good if it's moving in the right direction. So to add her name to it, okay, that wouldn't have been on any of the previous ones. I'm just saying President Emerita, because I just thought that was what her title was. So I'm confused as to what it would do to, to disrupt anything previous. She won the prior one that just had the Distinguished Alumni Award on it. Unless Christy wants to give us some feedback on it. Can she? Do we have, is there a motion on the floor? Mm -hmm. There's a motion. I, it hasn't been seconded. So procedurally, if there's not a second, then the motion fails. That's the process. There's no motion right now because my motion that was out there was for the president emerita to be added. I'm asking if the foundation has an issue or concern. So can Christy speak to that so that we can get clarification so we can make the correct motion for it? In regards to this particular, since it's an alumni award or in regards to the J.D. Ross award? No, this one only because you guys are reserving not putting president emerita on it. You just want to leave a Dr. Judy Mitchell Distinguished Alumni Award. So I'm asking, can the foundation give their input? Yeah, Chrissy, go ahead. So the, the J.D. Ross Award is a board award from the trustees and the Distinguished Alumni Award is an award out of our alumni office and foundation. So when I, when we talked about it with the um, foundation board, they had agreed to this title here, Dr. Judy Mitchell Distinguished Alumni Award. And I think along with what um, attorney Buck said is the emphasis on that she is a distinguished alumni 
and it talks about her career, you know, through the ranks. And um, I just thought it should be consistent along with the other one we gave to the other president who served as long. But um, and so I didn't propose that additional verbiage to them. Um, it's definitely a long title to put on an award with President Emerita. Just I just thought Dr. Judy Mitchell, Distinguished Alumni. We have to keep the Distinguished Alumni Award because that's how it's been since mm -hmm. the beginning. Um, so that's how I presented it to the foundation that it was going to the Board of Trustees for their stamp of approval. All right, then I will. Take and then the my foundation motion. all approved it, and they all they liked the way it read. So. That way. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll take my motion to remove the president emeritus and make it as stated on 4.3. Second. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Broderick. Aye. Trustee Bozinski. Aye. Trustee Garcia Guillen. Yes. Trustee Mahalik. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee O'Connor. Yes. Motion carries. 4.4. We're good there, Chairman. We're good. Yep. I was on the consent. Then we'll go to reports. 5.1. Right. Well, Chairman O'Connell and uh, trustees of the board and those joining with us today, both in person and virtually, happy holidays to you all. Thank you for being here as we head into the holiday season. I want to take a moment to, of course, uh, acknowledge the good work again being done at the college. But I, I want to take a, just a couple of minutes to uh, acknowledge some things that are not included in my report. And I think the first just an acknowledgement of the pristine audit is really a credit to the good work in our administration, uh, administrative and finance, financial services area, uh, and, and many, all, who are responsible for um, for anything related to money and budget here at the college. So to have a pristine, clean audit is something to be celebrated. So I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge that we are in the presence of the the next president of IVCC, and just want to take. Uh, a minute to offer some bittersweet congratulations. And if she would stand and be recognized, the next. I have some goosebumps here because I've been uh, with Tracy throughout this process and we are so extremely proud of her. Um, and she's not going far. She's just gonna be, you know, one jurisdiction away. And we're connected <laughs> geographically and we'll be connected to you um, and I think I can speak on behalf of the college community that everyone here at JJC is going to do everything possible to ensure your success as the very first alumni president of IVCC. So on behalf of everyone, Tracy, congratulations. We're so proud of you. As you, as you can see, uh, Trustee Samborski is not here today and we miss him today. Guess what he's doing? Yes, finals. That's right. So uh, Trustee Stamborski is a student first and he's honoring his responsibility as a student. So he's taking a chemistry final right now. So we wish him the best of luck on behalf of the uh, the entire college, which knowing Josh, he doesn't need any luck. He's all over it. So between last board meeting and this board meeting, I've uh, continued my tour of the units and departments here at the college and just want to take a moment to acknowledge all the good work that's being done in corporate and community services department. The images that you see in front of you are um, a variety of things. We've got Mila Lucek, a graduate of JJC's culinary arts program, teaching one of our lifelong learning culinary, take a close look, kids college classes. For those who aren't aware, we serve over 2000 people annually through our corporate and community services area. Um, everything from forklift driving to American Sign Language to 3D printing to culinary. So really proud of all the good work that's being done in that area. Dave Lance, Ken Santiago, uh, and of course, Amy Gray kind of running what, what is a really cool area of the college. So thank you. And you can see Deb Don in there. Uh, I believe she's making some holiday ornaments. Uh, that hopefully some of you picked up on one of our many events. 
So again, kudos to the leadership incorporating community services. Next up, I had an opportunity to tour you know, what is clearly one of our signature programs slash signature departments, areas, agriculture, horticulture, and vet tech. And I res resisted the urge to take an animal home with me after the vet tech program. Uh, but long term, that may not, I may not be able to brag. Uh, that may not be a fact. So really some really good work going on in ag, horticulture, um, and vet tech. And so you've got some images here. And the lower left-hand corner, we've got uh, vet tech students at an off-site lab as part of a large animal nursing class. So kudos to Brad Angus and all the leaders, Josh West, up to Amy Gray, and all the good work that's being done in agriculture. And as Christy and the foundation know, students come from all over Illinois for our agriculture program. And thankful for the foundation for supporting students who come from far down south to experience our incredible, extraordinary agriculture program. Well, for those of you who had a chance uh, to to attend the JJC Foundation pop-up photo walk with Santa and friends, it was a really fun event. Uh, we're, we're creating more opportunities for, for connection here at JJC, and we're finding that uh, many are interested in connecting and coming back to campus for activities just like this one. So uh, Storm, not as scary as he looks, not at all. A big softy looks like a scary Doberman Pinscher, not at all. So I wanna acknowledge uh, again, Chrissy's team, institutional advancement, uh, bringing hundreds and hundreds of people to campus. I did ask Santa for something, but it's not something I'm prepared to reveal in a public setting. <laughs> I wanna thank Chuck Morgan. Uh, just as a show of hands, and actually I won't do that to all of you, but if you haven't had the opportunity to attend any of our concerts, please do. Uh, you know, the, the community band here under the leadership of Chuck Morgan was really cool, right? That's an unsophisticated way of describing the event that night. The theater was packed and the community band, I'm gonna get the number wrong, over a hundred, uh, you know, participants in the community band, and some of them have been in that band for 43 years, 43 years. Wow. So I was invited and, and uh, just honored to accept an invitation to narrate. So it was the night before Christmas, the most nerve wracking thing I have done since I've been here at JJC. I've heard it went okay, it's acceptable. And so I think Chuck's gonna invite me back um, next year, but please, please take some time to, uh, to attend some of our concerts. Next up, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the president's holiday celebration and gift basket extravaganza. Chairman, I'm sorry. Chairman, I'm not sure how this got in here. This is not, this is very unprofessional. It's very unpre unpresidential. I'm not really sure what's going on. I can't fix this at all whatsoever. Um, I'm not going to steal any of Christie's thunder here, but, but I will tell you this because she, she has this. Okay, all right. Oh, look, mid jump, because she has some uh, some some numbers to share with you. But I do want to take a moment again to acknowledge anyone connected to the gift basket extravaganza, and it was indeed an extravaganza. 38 baskets were donated by our departments, which is, I believe, a record number. Last year, we had 22 baskets. Departments got together and put together 38 baskets in support of my family's uh, scholarship. So we're just being incredibly touched and humbled by the whole thing. And I'm going to withhold the numbers because I'm going to keep that for Christy to share. Uh, just want to acknowledge anyone connected to the gift baskets and congrats to all the winners. And we're going to have to check, you know, Andrew Morrison's tickets when they go in next year. <laughs> mm -hmm. As Bill mentioned, three years in a row winning twice. I mean, yeah. can you believe it? <laughs> uh -oh. Okay. Okay. So there's no funny business then. All right. Okay. <laughs> I want to take a moment to uh, thank the entire college community. This was a really special night for me and my family. Uh, and my family, of course, in Hawaii. It just, uh, just really touching and just really thankful for anyone who was involved and attended the investiture. 
Um, what a night. So thank you. So as we head into the spring semester, right, we're going to end, um, we're, we're going to head into the spring semester on a really celebratory note, because as you can see here, in terms of headcount and in terms of full-time student enrollment, we are looking at currently for the spring semester being up in enrollment. And we think about, you know, our reach in the community. And ultimately, you might hear enrollment, enrollment, enrollment. We're really interested in changing lives here, right? We're not interested in just looking at enrollment and taking all of the impact that we have on our community, both credit and non-credit, and summarizing it is in one term, and that is enrollment. Nonetheless, it is our measure of how many students we serve and our impact in the community. So really excited to report that we are up 9% in headcount and up 11.5% in full-time student enrollment. And a lot of that is due to the efforts of Dr. Farmer, uh, you know, new VP Valadez. I know all the deans and student development. I think I saw Bob sneak in here. He thinks he's hiding behind Pat there. There's a lot of effort that goes into reaching more students. And it's not one thing, it's not two things. It is a comprehensive approach. And I think you've heard that from me, you've heard that from Bob, you've heard that from Dr. Farmer but it is indeed paying dividends and we are extremely proud of these numbers and hope that you will celebrate them along with us. And with that, Chairman, I wanna wish everyone a happy holidays and uh, hope you all enjoy your time off and we'll see you in January, so thank you. Thank you. 5.2. Foundation report. Good afternoon. Um, as uh, Dr. Namuo mentioned last Friday, um, our department organized the annual president's holiday party for employees. And again, I wanted to thank all the departments. The most baskets we ever had was not 22, it was 21. And we had 38 baskets wow. delivered from all um, the departments and they were fabulous baskets. Um, before before um, this party, our largest amount raised for the president's scholarships um, was $6,100. And I'm excited to announce that Friday we brought in $8,200 for Dr. Namuo's family scholarship to support wow. first generation students. So, you know, from being here for so long and, and, and just realizing what makes people give and the excitement around the campus, this event was a true testament to the support that Dr. Namuo has received during his first six months of leadership here. We had over 300 employees attend the event. Now, Mr. Hogan, I just wanna say that my department took each of the <laughs> ticket bags and we folded them over and we shook them up and down several times. And then we had nine people witnessing one person put their hand in and pull it out. So it was a very <laughs> fair drawing. In response to Andy Morrison's luck, he does uh, write a pretty good sized check and has a lot of tickets <laughs> to put in all those baskets. So I wanna thank Andy for his support. Um, but uh, nonetheless, um, this $8,200 that we brought in brings the Namuo Family Endowment for first generation students almost to $12,000. Yesterday, I had the privilege of thanking um, uh, Dr. Namuo's dad. Uh, his parents made a significant gift to the scholarship, and I was able to call him in Hawaii. And um, I just, you know, we're, we're over a third of the way there for this endowment. Um, so we're really proud of that. And I want to thank everybody that participated um, in the party. Again, um, he mentioned the holiday pop-up walk. That was a result of an alumni survey that John Davis sent out asking our alums, what would you like to see from our office? And we had alumni tell us, we wanna be able to bring our families and kids back on campus. We thought it was important to have a free event for them to bring their families um, back. We had over 350 come. They were in their holiday best and, and sometimes in their Christmas pajamas. They didn't have to wait in line at the mall and they received um, free beverages and snacks and an opportunity to take pictures with Santa, Mrs. Santa Claus. 
we had faculty um, volunteer and we had a lot of our students from our clubs. We had over 25 students come out and dress up as elves. We had our police officers handing out candy canes at the door. Mm -hmm. So it was just a really good feel good event for our community. It didn't cost the community any money. And um, it was great to see our alumni be able to bring their families back on campus. As of today, um, I'm proud to say that we're over $400,000 from where we were last year at this time in annual contributions. We have secured over 600,000 in endowed scholarship funds since July 1st, since the beginning of our fiscal year. We've brought in four um, endowed scholarship, one being 522,000. Our annual appeal and endowment report went out and uh, um, our contributions are coming in every day. I'm excited to share those totals with you at our January Board of Trustees meeting. In January 2023, the foundation um, will have a new president, Mr. David Contario. He is the CEO of Hometown Bank. And at this time, I want to thank Dr. Brett Gould for serving as the president of the foundation for the past two years. Brett did a great job, and I know he was instrumental in in um, working with Klein um, on the dual credit. Um, he was a for those of you who don't know, he was assistant superintendent of curriculum at Lockport School High School. Um, he's a great foundation board member. He will remain on the board as the past president, but now Dave Contario is going to take over, so we're excited about that. The next foundation board meeting will be January 18th at 7.30 in the morning. And on behalf of the foundation board and myself, I want to wish all of you a safe and happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Five point three ICCTA. Thank you. On November eleventh and twelfth, we had our ICCTA quarterly meeting. Things that we spoke about in regarding to advocacy, we adopted the ICCTA state legislation goals for twenty twenty three, which are local control of community colleges, equitable funding for community college operations, equity in higher education, including neuro neurodiversity. Prote protection of the MAP grant recipients, preparing Illinois future workers and community college baccalaureate degrees. This is was also in coordination and dovetailed with the presidents. They also agreed to the same legislation that we did agenda for 2023. Uh, a note on February 6th to the 9th, we have the Community College National Legislative Summit in Washington, DC. Please let Kel uh, Karen know I almost slipped there, sorry about that. Karen, no, if you plan on attending, I'm used to the Kelly, um, because I know that Dr. Namuo, uh, myself and Josh are going with Kelly Rotor Tonelli. So the four of us are going. So if anyone else wants to and has it in their budget, I'll allocate for that. Uh, we discussed the recommendations for the Illinois Future of Work Task Force. Uh, we were also we also had uh, two roundtable topics that were discussed, which was economic development and virtual simulation learning. I'm just going to give you a couple of things that came up um, that were key points in the discussion with roundtable. Uh, the Center of Economic Development was a high button issue that they are basically they're the lifeline to your district. You need to connect with your CED, which I think we all did, um, and I think more of us as trustees need to be going to those meetings, which we did last this past Friday. I attended with Kelly and with Dr. Namuo and with some of our workforce people that I see in the audience, but it was really great to connect with them, and that is where we need to really establish good relationships to further the support with uh, a college and the development of their college, because we're in Will and Grundy, so we need to be active so that we're, you know, definitely inclusive. Can I uh, add to that real quick? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have liked to have been, um, and maybe I missed an email. I don't know because I was locked out of my device here for a little bit. But if uh, whoever organizes these, if they could just let reach out to more of the trustees and give us the option, maybe even, you know, send us a quick text, Karen, that this is coming up so that we can pencil it in our calendar, because I would have really liked to have been a part of that. Um, and maybe somebody did send an invite and I just missed it. Um, so I just wanted to add on to what Trustee Broder said. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. That would be great. Um, other things that we talked about was dual credit in that conversation in working with the high school starting in 9th, 10th, and 11th, and 12th grade. Mm -hmm. uh, developing better marketing for the community to get to them to know what community colleges are really all about. Um, and then we said there was eight-week courses with a financial award attached to it, which some of them have. 
uh, develop an ad advisory committee to help in the guidelines for CED development. So they talked about having committees that were citizen based, not just in or schools, you know, uh, employee based, but that and that presidents are out there in the communities talking with their local chambers, businesses, workforce and unions to get and keep a pulse on the needs of their communities and having current programs to meet the needs and to hire our students. And there are certifications. One community college now has 33 new certificate programs. So we're to explore that. That was something that was thrown back. So I thought that was good to come out of the discussion. We approved a re resolution honoring our past president, John Looney. We also had the neurodiversity inclusion statement that was revised and adapted by us. And I'm gonna read this because I think this is a critical thing that you need to all be aware of as how the col colleges all work together. It specifically states, the Board of Representatives, Administration, and staff of the Illinois Community College Trustees Association recognizes that neurodiversity among the students, faculty, and staff, trustees, and administration teams of our member colleges is critical to enhancing the educational experience for our students and providing for a more inclusive learning and operating environment, providing public benefits for our community. We believe that when neurodiverse divergent people are understood, valued, and empowered, we all stand to benefit from their important, oops, hold on, their important and unique contributions. This resolution represents our commitment to promoting an authentically inclusive learning environment in alignment with this deal. And I thought that's critical to mention. And we did, the last thing that I'm gonna bring up is that we encourage trustees to volunteer as judges for the 2023 uh, awards and scholarships. We do have one that we need to bring back that we couldn't last year, which was in regards to one of our alumni that had done success. She was still employed with us. So that one needs to come back. And I think Christy and Kelly will know who I'm talking about in regards to that, because they are looking for that award to come back since that was one of the top awards that they were gonna give out. Um, and then next month, since we won't have an ICCTA meeting, Alicia and I will give a more report, more conclusive report on the Governance Training Institute that we both attended so that you have more of an idea of what we did learn during that meeting. And that's all I have. Oh, Five point. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Anybody yeah. else? Nope, I think that's inclusive. And I uh, wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and see you next year. <laughs> Okay. Well, 5.4, a student trustee is, is <coughs> he's in school today. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so we're all pulling for you, Josh. Right. You give up your, uh, give up your AU. 5.5, <laughs> building the ground committee report. There was no B and G meeting this month. Uh, we will be reconvening next month. Very good. 5.6 policy committee report. Sure, so there were two uh, policies today on, on our agenda. One of them is 1.0500 for indemnification. And that one basically states that to the extent allowed by law, JJC will defend, compensate for harm, loss and hold harmless members of the board, administrators, employees and agents from and against any demands, claims, suits, et cetera, arising out of the performance of duties within the scope of employment performance. And then 1.86.00 is a board electronic communications policy. And then that one basically states that the administration will refrain from using, um, administrators will refrain from using electronic communication in a manner that violates the Open Meetings Act and briefly expounds upon the do's and don'ts. Um, and then I just want to let everybody know that all of the policies now are currently up to date. And even though Trustee Lee wasn't able to be here, uh, she and I want to give praise for all the hard work that was done on behalf of the policy committee, the administrators here on campus, um, now that all policies are up to date and are being reviewed on a four year cycle. And uh, Trustee Lee wanted me to share that uh, she and I, of course, we want to just wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a safe, happy new year. Thank you. Okay, 5.7, Finance Committee report. Jake and I had a chance to sit in with the members of Sikich. Ray Servini gave us the results of the audit. Um, I wanna start by just commending our finance team for the praise they got from Mr. Servini. Uh, in today's 
presentation by Ray Krause, he mentioned 92% of the grants were tested with no findings, which he said was very impressive, and we found it the same way. Um, Mr. Savini also mentioned that the annual financial report is above and beyond what is required, meaning that our college offers great transparency in our financing, that we have nothing hidden, and that the auditing team uh, felt that it was mentioning or worth mentioning. Uh, Sikich encountered no difficulty in performing the complexity of the audit, and this is mentioned in, on page three of the communications that was sent directly to the Board of Trustees. And you wonder why this is important. When we sit here and we listen to the Finance Committee, and we listen and we read all the reports, it's important that we have confidence in what we're seeing in these reports. And that is what the audit has told us, is that they could not find anything. So us as a board, it allows us to have a little more confidence in it. Does it mean we don't have to you know, pay diligence to it? No, we still do, but we at least know that uh, we have a second set of eyes or a great team that was there to help us. Uh, and that's great to um, also thank uh, Karen Kissel, Jeff Heap for all the work they did and the rest of their team. I know Jeff is probably excited that this is over for now. Um, Mr. Savini also commended the quality of our financial reporting by the team from Finance and Administration Services. Um, he has great confidence in um, just the recommendations he gave us and the recommendations from Jeff Heap, especially in transition to a new, new VP, uh, just helps us as a board make decisions. Uh, and this confidence is obviously supported by the report process by Sikich. Any questions for anybody on the report before Jeff sneaks out? <laughs> That's all I have, sir. Okay. All right, 5.7, no, 5.8, ACCT reports. That will be on the January report. Good, all right. Oh, so it's me, so uh, all I can say is, oh, the audit was great. Thanks for the audit and, and uh, thanks, of course, for Christy Mulvey, for the foundation, and uh, you, Jeff, also. <laughs> And uh, thank everybody. It's uh, it's uh, Christmas is coming, and uh, and the stockings are are lit on fire probably. So uh, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, we do have a uh, uh, we do have a uh, a let's see. We do have a closed session coming up. So uh, so we can't go yet. You can. When, as soon as we're as soon as we're done, uh, and uh, and uh, Merry Christmas to all. And uh, it's not night yet, but you know, good afternoon. <laughs> to Merry Christmas. <laughs> Anything further? <coughs> if not, then yay, Christmas. Give a motion. Can I get a motion to go to closed session? Motion. So moved. For the reason of. Two C one. You ready? Yes. Trustee Mahalik? Yes. Trustee Morales? Yes. Trustee O'Connell? Yes. Trustee Brzezinski? Yes. Trustee Broderick? Yes. Trustee Garcia Guillen? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. <laughs>